covered all the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies in depth. And now it is time to move on to the next generation of Spider-Man movies, that of Andrew Garfield. So are they any good? Hit that like button if you love them or comment down below if you don't. <laughs> Considering this movie would technically be classed as a remake in many people's eyes, it doesn't feel like a remake. It's hard to explain as it covers obviously like your, your backstory of the character and things like that, but everything is slightly different. As what we see is that the villain has changed, obviously it's not Green Goblin straight off the bat anyways, Green Goblin comes into the next movie, but we're seeing more of this development of him and Gwen Stacy rather than him and MJ. We're seeing that the web shooters are not organic and that he built them himself. And we're learning more about his parents rather than just forgetting about them and forgetting they exist. Like we basically saw in the Tom Maguires. And they didn't really get mentioned as much. Whereas this one heavily leans into basically the main two fundamental things in which the whole The, um, the Amazing Spider-Man universe is about. In which is his parents that are a big factor in the goings-ons in the first two Amazing Spider-Man movies, if they make any more, I'm pretty sure it'll be linked to what his father and mother did, some way or shape or form. And they also link around Gwen Stacy and Peter's relationship as a whole, and those two are the main factors in the Amazing Spider-Man universe. Also, what was different was the villain. Obviously, we are familiar with, like, Dr. Octavius, Green Goblin, Venom, Sandman, these types of villains we've been introduced to in the Tom Maguire's, and it was nice to see a fresh face of Lizard, and Lizard was a very surprising villain because he doesn't look like much when meets the eye, but his backstory of Dr. Connors wanting to grow another arm, because obviously he was missing an arm, and wanted to grow that limb by experimenting with lizards and how the lizards can grow their limbs back and he managed to grow himself an arm but then after realizing his body was changing differently and differently and turned into a giant reptile and to me that worked that whole angle of that villain it reminds you a lot of the sort of backstories that we saw in the Tom Maguire is really building up to that character development of how he became that character and I love that I think he made a great villain he was a surprising villain different and enjoyable at the same time and whilst we're talking about changes in the franchise we can't not talk about the main change that happened let's be honest Andrew taking over Spider-Man probably shocked a lot of people because we didn't really expect a remake to come that soon after the third installment in the Spider-Man franchise however when he came in, he seemed like a breath of fresh air. And I don't know what the reactions were at the time of release. Was it a bit hectic? I'm not particularly sure. But I think that looking back now, it seems as if that that change seemed natural. And that change over to Andrew Garfield, it was like people was ready for a new Spider-Man. Probably because of the failure of Spider-Man 3. And didn't live up to the hype that it created around itself. And now looking back on that, you're thinking... Andrew Garfield was probably the best option because he was young, vibrant, and his emotion into that character was perfect for what we needed to see in the Spider-Man universe. And I think his vibrant energy just brings all this movie together. And without him, I don't think this movie is a success. And just like I touched on there, the main thing and the main reason why this movie was a success was Gwen Stacy, Emma Stone, and also Peter Parker being played by Andrew Garfield. They had unbelievably good chemistry, and we wanted to see unbelievably good chemistry like we saw in Toby's with Toby and Kirsten Dunst playing, uh, obviously, Peter Parker and MJ, and we saw that similar sort of build-up in this particular movie. And to me, I love these two in the whole franchise, and obviously they have their bumps and their uh, turns, and obviously they're fans each other, and then they go into a relationship, then they break up, and then blah, blah, blah. But either way, they had good chemistry and it worked, it felt organic, and their relationship really helped glue this whole franchise together and had something lovable about it. To me, the ending was really impactful and what we wanted to see from the Spider-Man universe. Let's be honest, I think this was what we needed for the very first Amazing Spider-Man movie. An impactful ending, something emotional, something that we can build on. And that's what they did with Joe Stacy's death. And people might be like talking about, oh, talk about the Lizard. Lizard was always going to be defeated. We knew that we didn't see anybody saying otherwise what was going to happen we knew he was going to be defeated in that sort of manner but i think the main thing to talk about with that ending is george stacy's death as it felt impactful and with george stacy dying that led on to the effects of would be the relationship status of 
Gwen and Peter in the next movie as that suddenly changed and even though they were really close they end up being divided because George wanted Peter even though he cared for his daughter and what his daughter wanted but since he was Spider-Man he can't keep her safe and that he wanted her basically to keep his daughter safe by moving away from her and letting her live her life because in doing so he's protecting her by leaving her doing what she's doing and not putting her in any danger and obviously we've seen in the second one that knock-on effect in which we'll get onto when we do the amazing spider-man 2 but that little thing holds a lot of judgment later on as peter can't really get past the comments that george stacy says to him at the end of this movie so to summarize the amazing spider-man then for me i think this is easy 7.8 and a great film so let me know down in the comments down below is it any good is it bad is it great is it terrible is it amazing let us know all that jazz down in those comments down below please as that would be much appreciated also hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell to be alerted to all new content we create and i shall see you folks in the next one